Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm just going to show you how we set up scores to synchronize and showcase on the scoreboard so we can actually follow along and see what's actually happening in the game. Now I've just set up this quick scoreboard here. There's really nothing special to it. It's just a UI component with the image as a background. I just have these titles for the name and the kill and death. And then I have set up this player card here. So which is inside of a layout group, which is a vertical layout group. You can see all the settings here. And you can see I can just copy and paste as many of these cards as I want. And it'll perfectly fit into the list, which is exactly the idea of this. There's no scripts attached to anything yet. All of this is just purely set up UI wise and but frankly, probably very far from perfect, but it works, which is what matters for now. So we have this player card here. Let me make a miscellaneous folder here for scripts. And let's make one for this player card. Because this player card needs to be a prefab and we'll spawn one for each player that joins the game. So if I just throw that on here, and then in here we want a reference to each of the text mesh pros. I'll serialize field private text mesh pro UGY, which will be using the TM pro. And then we need the name text, the kills text, and the deaths text, like so. And we want a public void initialize, which will need a string for the name. And that's really just about it. We'll have the name text dot text equals to name. And that should just initialize it with the name. And I think that's about it really. Then we also need to have a public void set kills, which will just take an integer of kills and it'll set the kills text dot text equals to the kills dot to string. And we'll just copy paste this to set deaths and use deaths and use deaths and deaths text. There we go. So now we're setting the deaths and we can set the kills and we're initializing it with a name. And that should be about it here. Then we have the game UI manager. In here, we want a couple of things. First of all, we want the serialized field private reference to the player card. So the player card, and we'll just call this one player card prefab. And we also want the serialized field private transform to the player card parent. I tend to either call it a holder or a parent, both works. And now we need to know every time that a player joins, the game UI manager needs to be made aware that a player has joined in order to actually initialize a new card and set it up with the name. Now, in terms of name right now, I'm just going to be using client ID because that's all the name that we have. But connecting a name with the player shouldn't be too difficult a task. You should be able to handle that. Or if it's something you want me to handle, I can do it in a future video. Now in here, I want to make a public static void player joined like so. And I also want to make a public static void player left like so. And I probably also want a another dictionary actually of a connection between the client ID and the player card So like this. And I can call this one player cards equals to a new dictionary of type into player card like so. And then in here we can do player cards, oops, instance dot player cards dot add. And then we need to instantiate the player card prefab or that's the instance dot player card prefab at the instance dot player card parent. And of course, this needs to have the int client ID as well. So it needs to take in the client ID and then we instantiate the card prefab. And actually while doing this, it's let's just make it easier as well to understand. So we just make a new player card, new new card. We can just set that equals to what we instantiate here. We can take this new card, add it to this list. And then we can also take this new card dot initialize and then just throw in the client ID dot to string because that's going to be the name. So the name right now is just going to be a number. And upon a player leaving, we also want to know the int client id because this will need to go and remove it both from the dictionary and just completely remove it so we want to destroy or actually let's just do if instance dot underscore player cards dot try get value out of the client id out player card player card like that we want this we want to open this up then what we can do is we can destroy the player card instance so we can grab the player card dot game object destroy that and then we can also just remove it completely from the list by doing instance dot player cards dot remove at the client id and now this just needs to be called whenever a player joins or whenever a player leaves so we can just go in here in the on start client call game ui manager dot player joint and call the owner id in here and we just go down here on stop client and do the same thing game ui manager dot player left and call the owner id of the player who left and hopefully this should at least just initialize this now now we need to make a prefab out of the player card remove that go to the game manager we need to set up the player card here and we need to set up the layout group as the parent like so and hopefully this should just work and as you can see as soon as i joined it set it here now there is an error which is because on the player card we didn't set up these so we have the name have the kills and we have the deaths now it shouldn't throw an error 
hopefully. And it couldn't open the server because of specified port. Great. If you have this error, you can always just go and just change the port by one number like so. I can press play and now this works. So you can see name is just zero. Kills and deaths is one, two, three. Now I probably want to go into the player card in the initialize and just go kills text dot text equals to zero. And we most likely want to do the same for death. Death text. So it's also zero. Now this is going to work. We do however need to be able to open and close the whole scoreboard. So let's serialize field private game object, which will be the scoreboard, whoops, scoreboard, like so. And in the update method, which everybody needs to run, we can do if input.getKey down. And let me just do the key code off tap. If we get the key down, we can set the scoreboard to set active to true. And if input.getKey up key code dot tap, we can set the scoreboard dot set active to false, like so. Now, when we press it down, it will show up and we take it up, it will disappear. And let's also just in a wake, just remove it as well, uh, just so that it isn't visible right from the beginning. And now let's try and start the game. Oh, and we of course forgot to set the reference. Go to the game manager, have the scoreboard here, scoreboard there, and boom, there we go. And the port's unavailable again. Great. I don't know why this is happening. Horribly annoying, but let's just move the port one more number up. Save, click play. Same key has already been added. Oh yeah, this is because I think I showed in my professional setup video. If you haven't watched that, I also reference it in the first video. I have this enter play mode options enabled. That means dictionaries needs to be cleared manually, which I am not doing here, which actually I should be doing, which is interesting. It's saying it already exists, which is strange because I should remove it. Well, an easy fix to this is just going in here and disabling this. All those troubles should hopefully be gone. There we go. That problem is gone now. And let me just reload on the other one. And now over here, we have two players in here. And as I hold tab, you can see we have player zero and player one. As you can see, it also works perfectly with enabling and disabling the scoreboard when holding tab. That's perfect. And same it does on the other screen, which you just can't see. And yeah, so that, that obviously worked. Now, what we need to do is we need to synchronize the data from the player manager, I believe. Yeah, so here it is. We have this player class, which we keep track of in order to see how the different players do. So we need some way now to have this data synchronized and set on the different players. What I think we do on the player card, which is here, we have the set kills and set deaths, which is spelled wonderfully, might I say. We have these now where we can just call them on individual cards and we have a reference to these cards by client ID. So I'm thinking this is what we should do. So the game UI manager should have a public static void set kills, which will take in the int client ID and it'll take in the amount of kills. And then it, what it will do is it will take in the list of player cards that we have, the instance.playcards at the position of the client ID and it'll set the kills to the kills. But the thing is, this is now still just happening on the server. So this is not actually where we want it to happen. What we do is we do server RPC. Let's just do require ownership false. This will all just run on the server. So we could technically just do server. We can do private void set kills server. And we'll need all of this. And then we will need an up server, obviously. Do private void set kills up server, which will again need the client ID and the int or kills and it's an int for the client ID. This is wrong. It needs to set this in here to client ID and we need to send through the kills. And now this is what actually needs to happen down here like so. And the set kills server needs to be called up here with the client ID and the kills. And this is on the instance. And we need to make the exact same setup for setting deaths. So let's do a public static void set deaths int client ID int deaths like so. And we'll need a, just like we have here, we need a server call, which is private void set deaths server, like so, which needs an int for the client ID and an int for the deaths. And then here, lastly, we'll want the op servers RPC, private void set deaths op server, int client ID and int for the deaths. And then we grab the instance dot underscore player cards, the client ID position dot set deaths to deaths. And that should do the trick. Now we just fill out these deaths and the same with the server up here and that. And then the server up here will be client ID and deaths. And this is of course, once again, instance like so. And now we just need to call these when things change on the player manager. So that means down here, we just take the game UI manager dot set kills, which will be for the killer player and we'll set Oh, no, sorry, that will be the killer and the killer player dot score. And then we'll take the game UI manager dot set deaths for the player. And that will be the dead player dot deaths we'll want to set. 
let's see if this works again i kind of just wing all of this probably way more efficient ways of going about some of this but let's see and something here is not inheriting from network behavior which is probably the ui manager so this needs to be network behavior but everything should still work just fine the change to network behavior shouldn't change anything other than it's allowed to send network calls try and run and as we can see we have zero kills on player one and player zero oops sorry i'm on the wrong screen <laughs> we have zero kills on player zero and player one and as i kill this guy you can see now we have one kill and one death and let's just try and do that again we should even be able to see it with the scoreboard open you can see two kills two deaths same goes if the other player goes now and kills the player over here like so we should see in here now there's two kills and one death and one killed and two deaths so everything looks like it's working just fine now we have a working scoreboard we can change weapons we can shoot each other we can respawn we basically have a working team deathmatch game here or not so much team a free for all deathmatch game i should say still the teleporting issue but i kind of want to leave that to you guys to solve it's just a, a very simple timing thing so you just delay the visual and toggling of the player again uh, and he will stop teleporting around like that and hopefully this series has been good for you i think at this point i'm going to leave it at where it is and if you guys have anything specifically that you would want to see feel free to just leave it in the comments and i will look into that and make a new video on it hopefully and yeah hopefully you are satisfied with what it has turned out to be and how simple it's been i think total so far the time of the videos is somewhere between one hour and one hour and a half and i would say all of that for what's basically a fully functioning first person shooter game i think it's pretty beautiful in its simplicity the code base isn't perfect it's not fully production ready as per se but for a fun game to play with your friends a little player versus player game i think this is very forgiving i think it's very fun you can easily do it better maybe next time we can look into something like sound and audio or play animations and characters or whatever you'd like leave it in the comments below and i'll check it out and probably make a video on it and as always i just hope that you have a wonderful day